What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Touchdown with Doug Smith as we bring to you one of the most prolific NFL draft series on the internet. I ain't gonna let you down here, folks. I have a home run hitter, a guy who's getting a lot of looks by a lot of NFL teams. One of my favorite tackles in the draft. Uh, I think he could play tackle guard. He really play anywhere on the O line, from what I've read and what I've seen on the tape. He is amazing. He's that guy who could be relied on. He's that guy who could protect the quarterback's blind side. Uh, was recently at the East West Shrine Bowl. That's filled with a uh, uh, NFL draft hopefuls and college football elite. And man, do I tell you, is he elite? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take and welcome Donovan Jennings. How you doing today, man? What's up, man? How's it doing, man? Yeah, I'm Donovan Jennings. You know, you know thankful to be here on your podcast, man. Yeah, thank you. Dude, so glad to have you on the show, man. Uh, today you're going to take and get into your story a little bit. Um, dude, take us from the beginning, man. Where are you from originally? No, I'm from Tampa, Florida. Born and raised. You know, been here my whole life. Um, you know, played basketball growing up. You know, as a little kid, that was really, uh, you know, what I wanted to do, play basketball. So I played that, you know, from the age of five up until high school. And, uh, yeah, big basketball guy, you know, big family guy. Um, you know, chose USF out of a... You know, a lot of schools, um, you know, like Nebraska, UCF and, you know, Virginia and all those other options. And, uh, you know, chose to stay home, you know, for my family, you know, watch, watch me play and all that. And, uh, yeah, big basketball guy. I uh, played AU as well, you know. Um, and then, yeah, I made the transition uh, to football my junior year of high school. So, yeah, and then I uh, started then. And, uh, yeah, I've just been rolling ever since. Dude, that's dope, man. Thank you for sharing that with me, man. W when you played basketball and you used to hoop, well, uh, you, you know what they say, like, some of the best NFL players are hoopers, man. So what position did you play? Yeah, so, you know, I played I played center, you know, power forward, but I was always a, you know, a, you know, shooter. You know, I like to shoot that thing, and, uh, you know, yeah. I like to get up in space and dribble the ball, handle the ball, and, uh, you know, also post up as well, though, you know, use my feet, footwork. I could see see your cat like ability on the field, man. So it all makes yeah. sense now. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Very cool, man. Um, man, take us from when you first fell in love with the game of football. You mentioned you used to hoop. Did you do any other sports? And when did you fall in love with football? No, yeah. So it was uh, basically just basketball. Um, you know, started playing football my junior year, and I, uh, you know, really started to fall in love with it. Um, you know, still learning the game, still trying to you know get used to the game and everything. It'll be my first year, but. You know, my senior year, you know, it really took off for me, really uh, improved a lot better. And I was able to, you know, showcase, you know, what I could do on the field. So, you know, I was blessed enough to get some of uh, Division One offers. And, yeah, I just, you know, started rolling after that. That's awesome, dude. That is awesome. And, uh, dude, you've had one heck of a college football journey. Correct me if I'm wrong. From what I read online, you, I think you tied the program record for most uh, starts in a college football uh, career. Yeah, I broke it. Yeah, I broke it. So broke I had – yeah, it was um, most games played at USF. It was 55. So, yeah. Dude, that's amazing. And that record has been out for a minute, bro. So that's yeah. that's phenomenal. Uh, you and I were talking before we started recording. Uh, I had the pleasure of seeing you in person. I was probably one of the few people at the Alamo Dome with the USF hat in San Antonio, Texas. So <laughs> I, I heard about you then, and, and I started to follow up more and watch more of your tape. And I was like, yo, I have got to get this guy on the show so again thank you again um you went up against a fierce competitor man this guy is like he's one of the top he's in like top five for like most sacks in all of college football man and you you locked him down man uh talk to me a little bit about your regiment man and what what has made you to be the great college football player that you are man you know uh just going into it each, each and every game you know and um you know my per preparation leads me to success so you know, just confident in my preparation and, um, you know, just knowing that, you know, no matter who we play, no matter if we meet, maybe UTSA, you know, UConn, Alabama, no matter who it is, you know, just always looking, um, you know, put my best foot forward and uh, always looking to just, you know, be me and be my, you know, the football player I know I can be. And, uh, yeah, I just, you know, started since freshman year, you know, being able to come in and, you know, start as a true freshman, you know, it was a blessing. And, uh, yeah, just, you know, preparing each and every day. You know, um, you know, doing the same, you know, if the process is right, then, you know, you know, the outcome will be good. So, you know, you're just preparing and uh, hoping for the best. That's awesome, bro. That's awesome. And uh, obviously you had the East West Shrine Bowl after the college football season had ended. Man, talk to me about that experience, man. As you and a lot of other great players in the room, man. What was that like? Yeah, man, it was honestly just a, a great experience just to be able to just, you know, talk to and, you know, pick each other's minds and, 
you know, learn from some of the greats, you know, like Michael Vick and, you know, dudes like that and just being able to, you know, hear what they have to say and uh, just be able to play with some great players as well, you know, like Fred Gore Jr. and uh, you know, be able to block for him and, um, yeah. you know, um, and, you know, other play great players like him. So it was just, you know, a great feeling, great experience. You know, they put on a one, you know, first class experience. Everything was great from the quality of food to the, you know, to the everything. It was just awesome. And I, I appreciate them for having me. It was just a great experience. Dude, that's dope. That's dope, man. What would you say is your biggest lesson, your biggest takeaway from playing at USF? You know, if you, you know, sticking through the hard, you know, will come out, you will come out strong. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs, you know, coming in my true freshman year being ranked 22 and, uh, you know, just being through the ups and downs of the program and, you know, finishing strong last year, you know, not the best record we could have had, but definitely an improvement on 11, going seven and six, beating Syracuse in our bowl game. And just yeah. finishing on that note was a, was a great time and finishing it with my teammates and, you know, the coaches and everybody was just, it was a surreal moment. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. What was that Syracuse game like, man? Because y'all put a spanking on him, man. What did that feel like to really finish out your college football career on top? It felt good. You know, we were prepared. Uh, everybody was ready to play. Uh, mm -hmm. felt we were confident going into the game, just preparing yeah. the right way and knowing that we'll come out with a dub. So that's what happened. And it was just surreal to be, uh, you know, all the family and friends on the field and, you know, just celebrating that with my teammates, holding that trophy up. It was, it was a great moment. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the best barbecue in the state of Texas, The Jank. Now this barbecue is in four delicious flavors and they got some of the best dry rub in America. Guys, if you live in the state of Texas, in any HEB, you can now find the best barbecue in Texas on the shelves. No matter where you're at, all around the world, you can take and place an order down below right now in the description of this video. And guess what? It gets the Doug Smith co-sign. Because, hey, y'all know, I don't play when it comes to barbecue. Place that order right now. That's awesome, man. Uh, during this whole process, man, where have you uh, been training at and how have your interviews with uh, uh, NFL teams been going? It's been great. I uh, went to go train down at uh, Bomberitos down in Fort Lauderdale. It was a great experience. Trained with some great guys, you know, elite guys. I um, was able to get a lot better. Um, and, yeah, you know, the interview process has been going great. You know, talked to a lot of teams and, um, you know, just hoping for the best coming, praying. And, uh, you know, knowing that all the work that I can do now up to this point is finished. And, uh, you know, just willing that uh, team hope pitch me up. That's dope, man. I know this, this, this is a time of year where people are making arrangements to go all around the country. Uh, just so happens you have a short drive up the road. Are you, you just going to be hanging out in Tampa with your uh, family and loved ones for the draft? Yeah, so I'll just be hanging out with my family and friend, uh, family, really, and um, just keeping it nice and small, and, you know, just with the family and friends. That's dope, man. That's dope. Uh, man, growing up, man, um, d did you did you always play O-line or? No, I mean, you know, uh, it was, you know, like I said, I uh, played basketball, you know, growing up. So it was really not, um, you know, I was, you know, big and strong and fast. So that's what the position they put me at in high school. So it kind of just stuck. Gotcha. Very cool, man. That's awesome, dude. And who are some uh, offensive linemen that you've modeled your game after that parts of their game that you really appreciate? Yeah, you know, so at first, uh, it was just, you know, picking from my, you know, my teammates, you know, my true freshman, they're picking from my teammates and learning from them and seeing what they do good and seeing what I can improve on. And, uh, you know, and then moving on to NFL players, you know, like Tyler Smith, he's played, you know, he played in my conference at Tulsa. He's now playing for the Cowboys and just oh seeing God. his transition, uh, you know, he played left tackle and, you know, I've seen his transition from left tackle, left guard, and he's been playing really well for them. And, you know, Tristan Wolf's the hometown guy, you know, watched a lot of him just being a tough guy. So, yeah, you know, those are some of the players I watched. That's dope, man. That's dope. Um, once your name is called, man, what is that going to mean to you to be on an NFL team? Man, it's going to be crazy just uh, to experience that. It's kind of surreal. It's crazy. Um, it's really all I can say. It's pretty crazy. Uh, all the hard work and dedication and long hours and, you know, long years and just all the hard work I put in, you know, finally pays off. And, you know, not just for me, but for my family as well. And, uh, you know, they sacrificed a lot and, you know, did a lot for me along the way. So, just awesome if i could give anything back to them that was you know that was the whole you know, reason why i do this 
Yeah, man. Absolutely, man. And, and once your uh, name is called, man, you know, they sell your jersey on NFL.com and dude, like the, the euphoria is there. Well, you'll probably have be on cloud nine, like forever, <laughs> you know, but um, what are some of your goals year one in the NFL? Yeah, you know, I think some of my goals are just uh, prove myself as a player, you know, come and contribute to the team and, you know, hopefully earn a starting position. If not, you know, uh, you know, make the 53-man roster and just be able to contribute to the team, you know, in any sort of way, fashion I can and, you know, win a Super Bowl. Absolutely, man. That's fantastic, man. And develop player development is important, right? We see this all the time in the draft where a guy, he'll get selected and it's such a surreal moment, but it's not always the great, the best fit, man. The great thing about o lineman is that, hey, you're more likely to work out than, say, a uh, skill position like a receiver, a quarterback, right? Um, but that being said, what is something that you need from NFL teams to, sorry, what the team that drafts you, what is something that you need from that team that's going to help you in your development? Yeah, you know, uh, just someone to, uh, you know, just develop my technique and, you know, perfect my craft with me and just, you know, continue to build my uh, knowledge and depth as a football player and to just continue to, you know, teach me all the things I can learn and just, talk all the information in and just uh, put that onto the field and, you know, display it and put it on, um, put it on, put a show on. Love it, man. Love it. Now this year, there's a lot of good offense alignment and the cream rise to the top, man. Like you are, you're him as the young folks say, man, like you are, you are that guy, bro. I've, I've seen you. I watch a lot of your tape. I watch a lot of USF games, bro. You have, um, you've been the stable of the offense alignment. You could be relied on. You have so many, uh, it, it, it's very difficult to find, damn near any flaws in your game dude you tested well as well too i mean you're you're great um in your opinion in your words what is and and obviously a very competitive draft when it comes to the offensive line uh what are some things that give you edge over the other offensive linemen in this year's draft man you know i just think uh my athletic ability my ability to move people off the ball my ability to play tackle and guard at a high level and uh you know learning how to play center as well along the way but I just, you know, my ability to be dedicated and work hard and be, you know, my consistency, you know, I would say, um, you know, I played the most career games at USF. So just I'm a consistent, reliable offensive lineman that's going to come in each day and just try to be the best version of himself and, board and definitely work hard to be, um, you know, a starter and have a long career in the NFL, hopefully looking for like a 10 year career and uh, just continue to build on myself, uh, be a better man and just, continue to work on each day, me and myself getting better. I know they're going to get a very consistent, versatile, athletic, uh, uh, determined offensive lineman. Love that, dude. I love that. And then uh, you, you kind of answered this uh, with this last question, but I want to ask, what's something you want NFL teams to know about you that, hey, perhaps they may not know already? Um, I mean, you probably know if you look at my, like, my, my records and stuff, but, you know, my middle name is Blue unique uh you know, not a lot of teams know that uh without the e so uh and uh you know just uh you know i like to go fishing you know? go fishing that, catch go on a couple of lakes and yeah that's dope man uh, any uh yeah obviously you're from the tampa area so you know it very well and you and i both know that florida is like the best place in one of the best places in the world to go fishing man any places that you recommend for somebody who's getting into fishing man to possibly catch their first fish at Man, yeah, definitely just like a small local lake. I would feel like, you know, starting off, you know, keep it nice and small, you know, probably catch a good bass. Uh, yeah, just go like a nice little lake, you know, find open. Make sure you can fish in it, first of all. There's a lot of no fishing lakes, but uh, yeah, you know, throw a couple worms on there, you know, get, get, get the casting. That's dope, man. That's dope. Yeah, no, nah, uh, I'm from the Orlando area, man, so I know all too well, man. I hit the Indian River right outside of Cocoa Beach, man. That's it's like clockwork and it's great for impatient people. So that's, yeah. that's my recommendation. So y'all yeah. watching, y'all got two recommendations. So <laughs> there you go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man. Well, Donovan, bro, thank you so much for taking and coming on the show. Um, ladies and gentlemen, comment below. Let us know how this interview made you feel. Uh, also as well, go in the description of this video. You're looking to get inspired. You're going to want to follow this man on social media, man. He has a story to follow and uh, very excited again to take and have him on the show, but also as well to see how his story uh, looks like in the next couple of months, man. So y'all stay tuned. Before we go, Donovan, any, any shout outs, man? 
Hey, man, you know, shout out to 813, you know, Tampa Bay area. You know, shout out to everyone listening. You know, everyone listening. Go give me a follow. Uh, great podcast here. Uh, Donovan.73. And, uh, thank you, man. Go Bulls. Go Tampa. And, you know, follow me in this process. Yes, sir, man. Go Bulls. Y'all know what time it is. We'll Bulls, see you guys man. next time on the Touchdown with Doug Smith. Thank you for watching another episode of the Touchdown with Doug Smith, where we have exclusive NFL content and exclusive NFL interviews. Be sure to hit that like and that subscribe button. Follow us on social media. See you on the next one.